I'm coming back to you. This is gonna be one year now after I purchased this boat and everybody was asking me to do a walk around full review of the boat. I know I did the six month in my um, office area. And so today I'm gonna walk through the upgrades I've done, um, the things I like about the boat and any issues that I found with it. So let's go ahead and get this started. Here we go. So first off, we'll start here in the back of the boat and we're gonna start all the way underneath with some of the upgrades I've done. So, as everybody knows, this is the 210 FSH Sport that I have, and I've had tremendous success. I upkeep with it, it's a year old, everything is still in like new condition. Um, one of the most asked questions that I get is about the transducer and the mounting of the transducer. So, you can take a look down here, you can see that my transducer is mounted to the bottom of your jet pump plate, um, which extends back to your intake grate. And what you do is you tap it and you can see right in there, it bolts right to the plate. So you drill and tap, you run your lead line all the way up through, go ahead and come through the hole there and then make sure you seal it off really well. Now, that has not caused me a single issue. This has been backed by many people on forums and this was also recommended by the dealership mechanic at Cycle Springs here in Clearwater, Florida. The next thing that I had done to this boat is the West Marine Beyblaze LED underwater light for my transom. Uh, another thing here, this was one of the budget builds i did to show people i am going to add another one there and another one there eventually but i did this to show people how easy it was um go ahead and check out the link in the description or right up here on the top of the screen i will post a link to click over to see that installation as well so this was very simple this is a very easy budget friendly LED underwater light. It only has one color. It does not have RGB. This is blue. They also come in white and I believe green, but it is very inexpensive. Um, I believe it was $99, but that's just going off the top of my head. The white piece that you see there is for my underwater GoPro mount. I have not shot with that yet. I will be shooting with that in a video coming up soon. So look forward to that. Um, the next thing I installed was for the trailer, and that was these ratchet straps. Um, these are retractable, um, very quick and easy. Bolt right to where your um, stock hook one's hooked to. So you just bolt it on there with a single bolt. They swivel and they retract. So they're retractable ratchet straps, quick and easy. Um, they're right there on the trailer. I don't recommend the brand that I went with, went with after a few months, the spring that retracts it automatically uh, rusted off because it obviously was not galvanized. So if you're looking for one that retracts with a spring and does, does a quick retraction, this is not it, but it's still the, the ratcheting part still works just fine. So I decided to keep them. There's no issues with that. Only the quick release option has failed and uh but if you're looking there's many options out there and check out other people's uh forums on facebook as well as online one of the major things that we did have an issue with from the start of this boat is this ladder here so these nipples um are extremely sharp like razor blades and my friend was getting off the boat and slid his shin across it and ended up having something like 10 to 20 st stitches down his shin so it works phenomenal and everything like that i would just be take people into caution and let them know to watch out for the edge of the ladder when it is extended that this metal is very sharp i have gone and filed mine down a little bit to kind of make the inside edge that's unfinished not so sharp and that may be something you want to look to do if you uh, want to protect kids or guests on your boat. Shout out to 
jetboatpilot.com for their uh, fall special where they run the discount for the sea deck i got this swim platform sea deck for my boat it looks amazing fits perfectly and was an easy install you can check out my video for that as well on my channel now underneath here is where you have what's called your clean out ports and your flush ports for your engine so engine flush port here engine flush port here those are for when you're flushing your engine down in here is your clean out port okay all you're gonna do is turn it and lock it in it's about a quarter turn each way you got one for each side now what these do is they allow you access down to your um, impeller shaft and if you get anything wrapped up around it like a ski rope or a buoy rope or something like that maybe even heavy seaweed you can just reach down there without getting off your boat clear the wrapped around stuff and keep on with your day i have not had to use these once yet i have stopped and looked through them to make sure that i had nothing down there when i felt sluggish one time but i have not had anything get wrapped up in my impeller shaft here is your access panel to you're going to have your exhaust basically right here but it is an engine access panel you also have your valve over here and that is for when you are going to be using your jet wash you can open and close that valve for your jet wash pump for the water this is used in installs like the one for the underwater lighting and also anything that you want to run to the back here over here you do have two kill switches one for each engine okay and what that does is it lets you go ahead and flush your boat but your door has to be shut to start your engines that way you do not accidentally try to run your boat with the rear hatch in the up position As we move around over here to the side of the boat, the whole ride's great. The style is beautiful. As you can see, I'm in a veteran's boat parade tomorrow. That's what that number's for. Um, but yeah, if you're worried about the trailer, the trailer has a single set of disc brakes on these trailers instead of duals. Therefore, the reason the back rim looks dirtier than the front rim is that is a year of use of braking and these rims are extremely hard to clean if any of my fans have a uh, recommendation for a cleaner i've tried many of them to get this off of here but because this rim is not a smooth surface it kind of just you know sticks to the surface pretty well over here you have your basically what they call them is your motor pissers all right and what this is is this is where when your motor is running, you'll see a stream of water coming out, letting you know that water is circulating through your motor and that you are getting cooling because these motors are water cooled, just like uh, most watercraft. And then over here is for your bilge pump. This is where your bilge pump water will come out whenever you turn your bilge pump on. The next thing I added was these mid hole um, Retractable cleats, they are a little bit larger and sturdier than the ones that came with the boat, which are right here. And I did this because the buoy bag here is in a terrible position, so or fender, I'm sorry. So when you put these in, it helps because your fender is in the middle of your boat and you don't have to worry about banging up a dock. You can see here, if I get in close, that you'll get a little bit of dock rash. Now this will buff off, but before I installed those, that that back there did barely anything and we needed something here. So now I have one here and one up on the front there. Moving forward, uh, we'll get up there when I get in the boat. Um, the trailer that I got with my boat is the uh, aluminum slash galvanized trailer. It has held up fantastic. Still looks like it's in, you know, like new condition other than normal wear and tear with the brakes on the rims and stuff like that. But everything is in great working order after a year of saltwater use. No issues at all.
Um, oh, uh, one of the first things I did, of course, were my decals. I got these decals made at Boat Decals with a Z dot net. Um, you can customize your own decals. That is the same thing that I did with the name of the boat back here. And I custom made that myself and designed it. So you can design any font you want, any gradient you want, any colors you want, and they ship it right to you. Great company. They uh, were quick, easy to use their website, uh, easy to do the design, and it worked out great. Another one of the first things I did is got rid of that terrible bow roller from the factory and uh, ended up going with the Stoltz three and a half inch roller with bells that you can order. Um, you want to make sure that you get the right one for your boat. For this boat, it is the the 21 footer. It is the Stoltz three and a half inch with bells. And it even says for Shorelander trailers for Yamaha. So just make sure you order the right one. I have a link in my video from when I installed this as well. Moving down, I have the keel guard installed on my boat. Uh, this is the eight foot version, um, comes up. I could have brought it up just a little bit more. I recommend snugging it right there. This does stay above the water line. I've had no issues. This has been installed as well, almost a year, and it's not even coming off. Just make sure you follow the directions. Proper cleaning, proper scrubbing and prep before you put it on and it stays. It has saved my keel many of times when I've needed to beach quickly or when there was rubbish in the water and I have not had any problems with my keel. So highly recommend that as well. So that is pretty much it for the outside of the boat. Let's go ahead and move on up into the inside and we will start from the rear. All right, here we are on the rear. As we already know, I am on the aft swim platform area. It also has back cushions and a ski rope spot for skiing, wakeboarding, tubing, etc. I have been tubing. Check out the video. This boat does well with it and uh, it was very fun. Moving forward here, I have the jump seats installed. This boat comes with jump seats. Now these jump seats are easily removed and taken out when you don't need them. I'm gonna have a full boat tomorrow, so I have them in. The cushions come snap up, snap off, and these slide out from the side, and that's it. You also have a cooler here. I have the hooked 35 i heard they don't sell them anymore but it fit right under here i also heard that the yeti 45 i believe it is fits under here um if you need to replace the cooler that came with the boat i actually had no issues with the cooler that came with the boat it did very well i just wanted something that i could use on the boat and as well as like camping or going to the beach or something so i invested in a better cooler um i highly recommend hook coolers that's h-o-o-k-e-d hooked coolers they do a military and first responder discount and they have an awesome product and as you probably know this seat swivels so that you are able to sit and sit and face aft for fishing or hanging out at the sandbars or whatever you're looking to do that feature i love i don't use it as much as i thought i would but at some times when you do want that feature it's nice to have it there And then up here, don't mind the GoPro, that's for tomorrow's uh, boat parade. This is the 25th annual Veterans Boat Parade I'll be in tomorrow. Um, as most of you know, I am a Navy veteran and uh, I support uh, the Veterans Boat Day Parade here and I will continue to do that forward. It's a great event and I'm happy to have a boat now to be in it. Another thing that I installed was this bicolor spreader light on the rear here. This thing works fantastic. It is white and then or blue LED, so it's dual color. And um, what I did is instead of running a switch, I started with a switch up here so that it came on with my um, anchor light or my navigation lights. And then I realized that I didn't want it on all the time at night. So what I did is I installed this waterproof rocker switch right here, which disrupted the power and now 
whenever the it's nighttime and the anchor lights on or the navigation lights are on i can flip that button i just press it in and it turns it off press it in again it's white press it in again it's blue so i'm able to adjust that here's your anchor light right now i have the uh flag zip tied to it uh, it's an led anchor light works great i also have had these flags from flyaflag.com since i got the boat uh maybe a month or two after tops so i've had them almost a year and they are still in perfect condition i just throw them right in the water washing machine and they're good to go they have many other flags as well including service ones so let's move forward to the cockpit all right so this is your helm and i have done a couple upgrades here one of them is this and i use this every time it is called star brights windshield cup holder slash hook holder slash you know cutty something but <clears throat> it is where i hold my random stuff i have an extra cup holder i actually use for my phone and then i use these two cup holders for my cups this also can hold hooks and a fillet knife and also pliers so when you're fishing you have all that and i believe it was only like 16 dollars. great investment use it every single time coming up top real quick i got this uh atv mirror roll bar mirror so i purchased this as a budget purchase uh, a year ago with the boat i mean just after getting the boat you can see it on the channel under one of the budget things and i believe this was under 20 dollars, and it has lasted the entire time no issues at all because it is not glass and it is and the casing is plastic so there's no rust issues at all except for on the hardware which you can swap out with some marine grade stainless steel hardware and then not have to worry about it at all i also have up here a light bar that light bar it's a rigid horse light bar off of amazon and it works phenomenal um, again do not run this at night while you're running channels or anything like that this is a spotlight or a docking light this is not made to blind other boaters so please please do not be that guy that runs their boat with their light bar on you only use these as a spotlight if you need to spot something or a docking light for when you're docking at night us other boaters really really get irritated when you blind us and we can't see where we're going at night but that install was easy i have a video on that as well came in here with the original harness down through here and then i have it on my accessory switch next i have the garmin um, 94 sv ultra hd uh, installed you saw that in the beginning of the video with the transducer in the back this is a must for me i would say to anybody not only does it give you your depth you know you can mark locations mark entrances mark plot trails navigate so i mean i know most people might think it's just good for fishing but this thing is great for a numerous amount of things and i couldn't even remember all of them right now off the top of my head highly recommend that next the thing that i installed was the kicker kmc5 head unit this is by far the best marine head unit i have used to date and i have been working in the custom audio and marine sector for 20 years so i highly recommend this i'm not knocking the jl mm100 or any other brands but i think that this is the best source unit out there as for what came up oh, one more thing i did a lot of people know that there's a new law about your kill switch being attached to you so what i did was instead of having that short red one and not being able to move around my boat i attached a surf leech by woo wave on amazon i attach this surf leash to it and it goes out to 10 feet so i can walk to the front of the boat and i attach it to my ankle and i can walk to the front of the boat uh over to the trash can and i, I don't use it for the anchor obviously like once i'm down to low speed you don't have to have it on but i could easily anchor the boat with this on and still 
have the motors running and keeping me in place if I needed to. So another great product um, innovation here that I came up with, especially if you're in Florida or other states that have passed the law where you must have the kill switch tethered to you while you're at speed. Coming to the dash, um, they have a great setup, lots of rocker switches, two accessory switches, and uh, also they have the touch screen, uh, connect screen, which will give you all your information on your motors, your hours, uh, your fuel economy, all that good stuff. It's a, it's a very beautiful layout and I love it. You got your dual throttles here. Obviously this is in the neutral position. Then you have your forward, your reverse, and then your full reverse and your full throttle forward. So that works very well, very responsive. I've had no issues. I know a lot of people have a tough time uh, and they install Cobra Jet or thrust vectors and stuff like that. But with this model, the 2021 FSH, I, I, I can handle this thing better than most people handle their prop boats or their inboard outboards, especially having the dual engines. I can literally steer the boat just with the throttles alone. Don't even need the steering wheel at some cases. Um, you also have your jet wash and your no wake mode slash your cruise assist. Over here, you have your ignition keys and your blower fan for your engine bay. So you can make sure you blow out those gas fumes before you start the boat. And there is your kill switch attachment. Down below here, you have, and it's tough to see, I apologize for that, but you have a circuit breaker, a USB charging outlet, and a cigarette lighter type uh, charging outlet for your needs if you need them as, as well as a little cubby here then you have a lockable storage area down here uh plenty of room you can store a bunch of stuff i usually have my first aid some wipes some sunscreen my sweat towel and then a waterproof canister with things i may need that i don't want to get wet all right let's move back here so um, as you can see in one of my other videos, I did install two six and a half back here. It provides a good sound stage firing forward, gives you a really good uh, surround sound type element to your boat. Um, I, I love this position of these, and I also installed the eight inches Scar Audios on the side, and then two more six and a halfs up front. And this uh, system rocks. I have the 1000 watt four channel by them, where I'm running the four six and a halfs on two channels and I'm running the two eight inches on the other channels and uh, people are amazed by it. So this comes out easily, you just lift up, pull it out. And then of course I told you these just snap on. And then under here is where your batteries are. So you have your battery switches and what this does is it kills your batteries. Um, well, your Basically, it kills your current for your battery so that you're not wasting your battery power. Um, you have your house switch, your start switch down there, and then this is your parallel, which means that both batteries will be used in case your battery cannot start your motors. You can draw the juice from the other battery and double it up to help you. I also have my fire extinguisher down here, and then I also have my clamps and those uh, koozies down there. I have um, two hose clamps and that is for in case I need to be towed. I ended up not going with the valves because I didn't want to cut into it and I have a bad back from an injury in the military and it was very hard to get down in there. This is also another must down here. This is the Pro, the Mariner Pro Sport um, battery tender and this basically makes sure that my batteries are charged at all times. It isolates each battery and charges them individually and make sure that they're at their peak performance. Now with that, I also installed the extension cord plug so that I do not need to have this door open. I can just plug right into here when my boat's parked and it takes care of the rest. It's intelligent, has all kinds of features that protect the batteries and any issues you might have. One of the things I did find when I had this boat is this right here. These screws were, um, not installed very properly. I'm guessing they didn't pre-drill on any of this stuff because most of the screws 
or not most, I'm sorry, a few of the screws have come loose and this was starting to fall and not hold up very well. So I moved it, you can see right here, I had to move it over because it was bouncing around and rubbing. So I moved it over, drilled some pilot holes to properly install the screws and then reinstalled the screws and it has worked fantastic ever since. If you run into a problem where screws are coming out and they just won't snug up all the way or they're stripped out, just uh, pull them out, move it over, use a drill bit smaller than the threads to drill a pilot hole and then screw them in properly without over torquing them and then they will work just fine. Underneath here, let's see if I can do it with one hand, probably not. Oh, I can. Is your engine bay. So you got twin Yamaha TR1 motors. I know this is tough to see and I apologize again, but you get the point. They're dual three cylinder motors, very good on gas and they have worked phenomenally. I, uh, I coat all my things in, uh, in salt away to make sure that they're good to go. I also have the dealership. They take care of my servicing and they silicone spray everything that needs to be silicone sprayed so it doesn't rust. So my engines still look like they are brand new. One of the complaints people have is the engine noise. Now the engine noise does, you know, it's a little, louder than outboards but the reason i say that is because they're right underneath you in an echo chamber basically so you're going to get some res uh, you know some resignation from that chamber down there now i've seen people do dynamat and um these 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 uh sound deadeners that you use for car audio i highly recommend not doing that if you go to their website they actually have engine bay sound silencers that are made for engine bays. So when you go on their website, I believe it's Dynamat's website, they have a marine mat for engine bays, which will silence sound instead of deadening sound. And that's two different things. I don't wanna to go too far into it, but if you're gonna do it properly, get that kit and you're gonna be blown away about how you don't hear the engines anymore. But remember, you're sitting right on top of them. They're inside the boat. They're in an echo chamber. You're gonna hear them more than an outboard. An outboard's way back behind the boat and it is also um, off the boat in an open area. So as you're going, the sound is traveling backwards away from you, not right underneath you resonating through the boat. But again, it is not. it has not bothered me at all. I don't think it's an issue at all. I was never bothered by it. That's why I didn't put anything in there. I personally, my sound system's louder than I can't hear anything, not even the wind. So I, uh, I don't have to worry about it, but even before I put the new sound system in, I was not bothered by the sound. But if you like very, very quiet, then you need to add that uh, silencer material to your engine room. On this side, you have some storage under here. This is where I keep my wash down hose. That mallet is for something I'll show you in a second. And then I have some water shoes down there. I also make people put their shoes in here when they get on my boat before they walk around. Uh, no shoes on the boat is always the best idea. And then just off of that, you have your live well. So this is your live well. It is very big, spacious. It is a great live well. It also has a blue LED light at night so that you can see. And it's like a moonlight for the fish. Coming down the side here. The reason I have that mallet is because I picked this up. It's called Yak Gear. And it is a floating carbon fiber manual pole anchor so when you are at the sandbar or you are fishing in some shallow waters this is eight feet long you can put this at the after your boat drop your front anchor put this at the after your boat or if you're uh, fishing and you don't want to drop a front anchor and you just want to stay in a, in a spot in the smooth waters you can literally just tap this down into the ground and then um, tie off onto it so i use the uh, airhead dock lines that are um, they uh, are elastic so that they stretch so if there is any waves or boats passing by they don't just rip it out they stretch with it and this thing works fantastic and I believe it is only about fifty dollars instead of spending the two thousand plus dollars for a power pole next is this 
also something that I highly recommend. It's a boat, a boat hook. Um, this right here helps you with putting lines over dock poles, pushing off the dock, grabbing the dock, grabbing cleats, especially if you're alone, you can use this while being at the helm to throw a dock line on. Um, I've used it in many instances, pick stuff out of the water. So, and then on the end there is also threaded so that you can put a scrub brush on the end and you can wash your boat with it. So it's a very good product. Uh, they sell these online. You can get them pretty much anywhere. Moving around here on the side, I did get an AM FM extendable antenna because the stock one was terrible. It was run inside the um, center console area behind the back there. And it was just a wire that hung. So it didn't get very good reception when you got out of town. This one is in another one of my videos is on Amazon. I believe it's under $20. And it gives you a little more range on your uh, AM FM channels for your stereo if you're not using Bluetooth. I primarily use Bluetooth though. All right, there's that light bar I was telling you about there. I said Rigid Horse, it is fantastic. It's in another video, go ahead and check that out. Um, and then underneath your center console door here is one of the biggest issues I had with this boat. So I had to bring it back three times. And as you can see on mine, they have installed these wedges. So what was happening is this door was coming over and shifting over to the side here, and it was scratching really bad on the outside. It was misaligned and they tried realigning it and it didn't work. And they have now come up at Cycle Springs in Clearwater, Florida with these blocks that kind of force the alignment of the door. That way it does not get off aligned anymore. So that's one of the issues I was having. If you're having that issue, reach out to Cycle Springs. Um, if you're in the area, if not, uh, make sure you put a request in to have this door checked out because it seems to be a major problem with a lot of the people with this boat of it getting misaligned and scratching the outside. Now inside here, as you can remember from one of my videos, I installed the Thetford Porta Potty. That thing works fantastic. It hasn't moved. It's easy to get in and out. And, uh, and then you have your bathroom down here. So it works out great. I also keep my extra gear up front here. Um, I have a battery jump pack down there as well as my um, Coast Guard safety kit with life jackets, horn, flares, etc. All stored underneath the front here. So that's your changing room slash my bathroom. And this is lockable. So when you are docked somewhere overnight, you can throw your stuff down in there. Now under here is where I keep my rear anchor, some floats and some sporting stuff for the beach. So you know, I got my football, my Frisbee, uh, a couple of Big Joe sling floats, and then my anchor ball and my rear anchor for rough conditions. Um, that right there is for my table mount. I have a table that sits in the middle here, and I also have a full sun deck pad. As you can see here, I have another section that comes in here. And that turns the whole front of the boat into a sun pad, sun deck for um, your f lady friends to tan up there and lay out. Um, or if you have taller friends, they can lay, the, they can, you know, stretch their legs out and stuff like that if they're over six feet tall up there. Or if you have the kids, you get to put blankets up there and stuff and they can just hang out and it's on like their little platform. Um, one of the kids likes to go underneath here too as well. Obviously not while the boat's moving, but it takes like a nap under there because it blocks from the sun and the heat. Now that comes off and then that goes onto the table mount leg that goes up there. And then just on the bottom of this, it has the mount and then it sits on top. You take the cushion off and now you have a table to sit around for the family to eat lunch or something like that. Over here, you have the built-in trash can which is a lifesaver, I love it. And then you can see from here that you have a fish box up front.
let's come on over here and show you the fish box right now i've got it prepped for tomorrow uh yeah it's gonna be a cooler tomorrow don't judge me uh this is gonna be for seven people so it's not just for me more cup holders and then of course you have your anchor locker here now this is one of the things that i dislike about this boat and it's funny because yamaha has boats that already do this and they're hinged on the side so it goes out of your way well this one folds up and in front of you so you have to reach over it or go around it to get your anchor and that is a bit annoying yamaha you need to fix that Under this side, you have more storage. Um, I keep my fenders and stuff up towards the front for easy access. I'll show you why in a second. My table leg and then my umbrella. So that is a beach umbrella. And you can also use that table leg to mount here and then have a beach umbrella shade over the front of the boat. Pretty uh, innovative idea, pretty cheap too. Over here is where I store my airhead bungee dock lines. Uh, my mooring lines, and then some equipment. One of the things I recommend are these, these clips for boating. You slide the uh, rope up through there. It locks down on it and it lets you adjust your fender length quickly and you don't have to tie them anymore. So, as you can see here, just clip right onto the side and then easy adjust the length. And uh, yeah, that is about it. I also installed some cell phone holders for my friends when they go to these front seats so that they don't have to use a cup holder or take up space or let it bounce around or lose it. So I have a cup holder on each side up here for them. But it's getting pretty late, so why don't I turn the battery on and show you the LEDs? All right, so here is the underwater light, as you can see down there. And then, moving up forward here, there is the rear spreader light I was telling you about. And how it quickly changes from blue to white, back to blue, and then off. I've also installed RGBs around the entire boat. I have them under here, under the gunnels, on each side, as well as in the front for the seats here is too. So I got LEDs all over the boat. These all change colors. And the great thing about the KMC5 head unit is that it has a LED ring that matches the color you change it to. But yeah, that's the boat. There's your LED anchor light. And I hope you guys enjoyed this review.